Hello, hello, happy live, happy almost long weekend, happy Wednesday, happy whatever you want to celebrate today. Thank you guys for popping in. I am going to do my normal today, which is answer your guys' questions. If you did not write me throughout the week and you want to write in here, feel free to write in the chat. Otherwise, I will just answer some that have come in throughout the week. I'll also do some happy news and some real estate updates, okay? So we will dive right in. Again, thank you guys for popping in and any questions, feel free to write them, okay? So the first question comes from Kathy in Oro. Kathy in Oro says, I want to paint the, uh, paint the brick at my house, but my neighbor who is really good at decorating said that that will bring the value down. Is that true? Thank you, Kathy, for asking. And to be honest, I've never heard of painting the brick bringing down the value. Maybe just that's her personal opinion. And she doesn't like the look of painted brick, but many times I've seen brick painted as well as I have done it. So we've seen a lot lately people painting white and doing like black accents or what have you. I have painted one like, not say a navy blue, but it was like this kind of charcoal-y, um, dark gray, a little bit of blue color before. That's the only one I've done, but I've seen lots of people paint over yellow, etc. paint different ones. So I'm pro for painting brick and I do not think it'll bring down the value. I actually think it can make uh, it look really cute. So thank you for asking. And um, again, I just do some happy news before we jump into the real estate, okay? So obviously with small businesses, even before COVID, you know, there's lots of ups and downs, of course, in small businesses, but there was just a survey done. So it was of a thousand people that all own small businesses and actually 65% say that they feel like they're living the dream of small businesses, which was nice to hear, obviously, because we hear a lot of negative things during COVID about small businesses and a lot having to shut down, etc. So with over a thousand of them being asked or surveyed and 65% think they're living the dream, uh, dream. that was nice to hear. And 71% said through sacrifice, willing to take chances and hard work, they believe that that's how they are living the dream. And 83% of people said living the dream with a small business is being financially comfortable and stable. And 32% of them said being a self-made you know, just person or business, etc., is reward enough. And three out of five of them said that they would like to in the future become a chain. And less than 25% of them actually only had a physical store without a website. So majority of them either already had a website or were just a website, which was interesting. And 34% of them said they were trying to find a way to pay their staff more. So I thought that was cute as well. So the next question comes from Brandy in Newmarket. Again, if you guys want to write your questions in here, you can. Otherwise, I will just answer some that have come up throughout the week. And again, hope you guys are all well. So Brandy in Newmarket asked, I've heard the market slowed. We currently rent and would love to buy. How do we know if we should buy now or wait if it slows more? Um, thank you, Brandy, for asking. So of course, it is not known, right? So I'll talk later when I talk about the real estate, but let's just say, you know, as liberals in or conservative or NDP or Green Party or whoever's in, we don't know what they're going to do. So we can't say what that's going to do to the market. Also, the interest rates, I'm sure you've heard of the interest rates going up. Perhaps you have locked in yourself for maybe 90 days or something like that. So just because the Bank of Canada has all these set things to happen the rest of the year doesn't mean that they're going to go up every single time. They might go up every single time, which it has been, um, you know, suggested that it will and it'll go up, but like the average rate will be between 4.7 and 5.2 is what they're projecting, but doesn't necessarily mean it's set in stone. So it's hard to say what will happen. It's hard to say because a lot of actually people from Ontario have been leaving the province. So will we still have, you know, will we still, right now we have inventory issues that we have too much demand and not enough inventory. Is that still going to be an issue or are more people going to leave Ontario and then we don't have inventory issues? So it's kind of hard to generalize all of that. And it's really unknown, to be honest. We don't have a crystal ball we can guess, but we don't know, you know, is somebody going to come in and say, hey, land transfer taxes doubled and hey, you have to pay capital gains on your home and hey, you have to do this. Hey, you have to do that. So unfortunately, I can't answer that question fully, but um uh, obviously I'll talk later about house prices and how much they've gone up in the past two years. So most people just like to get into a home and let the home save for them because it's really hard to save the amount that homes have been going up. Okay. But thank you for asking. Uh, the next thing was, I actually thought it was a cute story. So back in 1999, there was this lady on a plane and she was traveling from Amsterdam to, um, Minneapolis and there was two young girls. They couldn't speak English very well. And they were kind of like doing sign language like, oh, I play tennis or what have you, because that's what the lady did. 
uh, who was older than them, of course, they were fleeing Yugoslavia just because of the war, these young girls. And the one was 12. I didn't catch the age of the other sister. Anyways, this lady on the plane gave them an envelope and said not to open it till after she had left the plane, etc. And it had like little earrings for them. I'm not sure if she just had them in her carry-on bag or something. And a note and a $100 bill. And the note read, I am so sorry that the bombing of your country has caused you and your family problems. I hope your stay in America is a safe and happy one for you. A friend from the plane. And although it was only $100 she gave, it was a lot of money to these two girls. And they actually said it really helped them with their accommodations in the beginning of their stay in the United States. And then, you know, fast forward now, it's like 23 years later, they're in their 30s and they decided they wanted to meet this lady. So they put out basically a post online and Twitter and it got shared a bunch of times. And then some people kind of put two and two together, knowing that their coach had been at, I guess, at some um, tennis open or something and was possibly on, on that plane and put two and two together. And they ended up getting in contact with this lady. They did a Zoom call with her and this lady is now 70 and she has five children, but now she feels like she has seven because she feels like these two young ladies are her children. So anyways, I thought it was a cute story. So that's just me. I like mushy things. Um, next question comes from Dan in Keswick. So Dan in uh, Keswick wrote in and said, do you think it's dumb right now to buy a property to rent short term rental? Um, no, Dan, I don't think it's um, dumb or stupid. I forget what your uh, wording was. Uh, last year or last week, actually, I said about how people, I forget what the number was, like 56% of people or something uh, want to stay locally. They don't feel comfortable to fly yet or maybe they don't want to do testing or maybe they're not vaccinated and there's still all these rules and so forth. So um, a lot of people are staying local and maybe it's just they're being more concerned with their money and they don't want to spend as much. Or again, they're just taking advantage and saying, hey, there's actually a lot of really beautiful parts of Ontario that we haven't seen and um, or maybe have experience in the last two years that we didn't know about so let's just explore Ontario and stay locally so there are lots of people doing short-term rentals as in visiting them so I don't think it's a bad idea and again I'll talk later about real estate and how much it's gone up in two years so if you just try and save that money in the bank it's not going to happen whereas if you put it in real estate then not only do you make money you know every year not only do they pay down your principal but also the home goes up in value. So I think it's a great idea. So thank you for asking, Dan. And one more thing before the real estate updates. So um, there was a couple, or there is a couple, I should say, in Vancouver, and they purchased a really large property uh, on Vancouver Island, and they were going to use it for events. So it's um, 81 acres. They just bought it last year. They were doing renovations and so forth, and the man's grandparents are um, basically came years ago um, as immigrants and I'm trying to find actually where I was here um, but so they decided instead of doing this event center and this resort we are going to turn it into somewhere for refugees to come as a safe haven and so they're going to house um, 100 people and they've started with 20 so far and um, I had met, I said his grandparents, but I didn't tell you where, where they were from, but Ukraine, if you didn't catch that or figure the two out. So it used to be called the um, Gro Gross Nest or Grouse Nest was the name of their 81 acres. And now they've changed it to the Ukrainian Safe Haven. And they've also um, set up something so contractors can get involved and volunteer their time and people can donate. So now all, all the 100 people that are going to come there, they have food set up. They have education, they have transportation, and they have assistance for them to get back on their feet. So I liked that. And um, next, we're doing real estate. So again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'm going to jump into real estate, okay? Okay. So, um, as many people know, obviously, Ontario is very expensive. And we've actually, I mentioned a little bit earlier that a lot of people have been leaving Ontario, which before wasn't common then it was a little bit common. Now it's like everybody practically, which is sad, although I'm giggling, like laughing at it. It's just more of like, can't believe it. But anyways, a lot of people are leaving, but I do believe it because it's so expensive to live here. 
So not counting Ontario, but just all of Canada, the average to live in all of Canada is over 800. So if you think of Ontario, because it's the most expensive right now province to live in, obviously if all of Canada is over 800 on average, then uh, Canada is much closer to a million, etc. So basically what you can get for a million dollars around Ontario, I'm just going to say some places. So for example, in Toronto, you can get a townhome for around a million dollars. In Kitchener, you can get a condo, uh, not for a million dollars, for cheaper, about 829 in Kitchener. In Windsor, you can get a new, brand new, four bedroom, three bathroom for a million dollars. In North Bay, you can get a detached five bedroom for cheaper, so 780. In Ottawa, you can get a home for under five years old, like an under five year old home, four bedroom, three bathroom for a million. In Niagara on the Lake, you can get a town home, four bedroom, four bath for a million. Uh, in Thunder Bay, which this is crazy to me, uh, so for nine sixty nine in Thunder Bay, you can get a four bedroom, four bath in Thunder Bay. That is insane to me because I know back in the day when it was like eighty to one hundred thirty thousand. Because I had a good friend who was a realtor there. So for nine sixty nine is craziness. Uh, this place called Hearst. I actually had to look it up because I had no idea where it was. It is, or where it is, it's six and a half hours north of North Bay, and there to get a detached four bedroom, two bathroom home is seven fifty. Which again makes sense that all these people are leaving Ontario, right? Because if you're paying that amount and you're over ten hours from Toronto, is crazy. So a lot of people are going to Alberta, for example. They're going out east and so forth, or some are going to the states. So that makes sense. Uh, in London, you can get an older home, five bedroom, one car garage for a million. Again, these are just averages. In Barrie, we, you can get like a mid-aged home, detached, four bedroom, four bathroom for a million. Okay. So obviously with elections coming up, uh, even though it's elections again, because I feel like I just had these conversations not too long ago, what are all of the different parties saying? I'll go into more detail like as we get closer to, etc. But um, so the conservatives, for example, so um, Doug Ford, he's saying about the $1.5 million, not $1.5 million, $1.5 million homes that he wants to build within 10 years. However, he's not saying any changes about zoning. So a lot of people are like, hey, you're going to build all these things, all these homes, but they're all single family homes. They're not apartments. They're not condos. They're not multiplexes, etc., which not everybody is excited about. Um, then NDP. So Andrea, what's her last name? Har Harworth? Harworth? Um, she's also saying 1.5 million homes will be built, but she's more combining, hey, it's going to be first time home buyers like starter homes, it's also going to be low income, and it's also going to be multiplex residentials. Residences, same thing. There's my dog. You see my dog there. <laughs> um, NDPs, that's Charlie, by the way. NDPs uh, are talking about doing like home equity loans. So if as a couple or a single person just per household, if you make less than 200000 then they're saying we'll give you 10%. So they are doing that as a home equity line of credit to help you with your down payment. This is what they're talking about. This is just everybody what they're saying basically to get votes. And um, liberals are also saying about the 1.5 million homes to be built. They are saying a bunch of other things as well. So they're saying they want to allow single family uh, homes that might currently just have one family to have three families. They're saying about, I call them like alley suites but or laneways, whatever you want to call the back alley to allow those to be legal. Um, they're also saying basically it's um, in, in slang, use it or lose it kind of thing. So they're saying for investors, let's just say from China or something, that they're not just buying homes and laying them sit vacant, that they're actually using the properties. So they're trying to put a tax on people that are not using their properties. They're also trying to give higher rebates for first time buyers. Again, this is everything they're talking about, but to get votes, uh, whether they'll do it or not, who knows. Uh, and also they want to blind, ban blind bidding. So normally right now when there's multiple offers, so for example, my clients were in multiple offers two days ago. So there were seven offers and it was listed for six ninety nine. We don't know is, you know, are there going to be people that put 702, 750, 900, 940? We have no idea. So there's seven offers, but we don't know what people are putting. So uh, the liberals are saying they want to ban that so they know and this person's like 705 and the other person says 706 and we know the numbers and we, we can say yes we want 707 or no we don't kind of thing so that's what they're saying they want to do but in Sweden as well as Australia they do not have blind bidding so they allow like auction style and their average sales price has gone up 
uh, drastically since that ha has happened. So a lot have economists and so forth are saying that that's not the way to go. And politicians, because they're saying that's going to drive it up more. And also they want to talk about homelessness and um, how much rents can be raised by landlords. Um, so currently rents are up 6.6% 6 .6 in 2022 over 2021 which to some sounds like a lot when back in the day they could only raise it like 0.75 or 1.2, etc. But when you hear of homes that are up over 30% in a year, it kind of makes sense that they have to cover if they're buying this home to rent out. You know, they obviously have to get more rent since the home costs more to buy. So it's a big snowball effect. Effect. Um, so in Canada, the average rent right now is 1818 dollars $1, and last year it was $1,706 for rent, okay? So every week I read all these articles and sometimes I feel like a bit of a broken record on here because I'm saying that I wish people would know the whole picture, all of the facts, all of the um, kind of information before they make their generalization, but, you know, with fear-mongering and how... They call it like clickbait, clickbait or whatever. They don't want you to read that things are like fine and hunky dory, whatever. They want you to read like the world's ending or crashing or the market's crashing or what have you. So, for example, I read an article and it said like 25.7% drop in homes sold, which, yes, less homes did sell. Uh, and that was countrywide. So across Canada. And then it said 3.8% less homes sold in April than in March, which is also true. So I'm not saying they're lying. Um, but they also don't mention that the average sales price has gone up from April 2022 from April 2021. They also don't say that this happens every single year because April, May, June, there's always way more listings. So as there's more inventory, then there's always a bit of a dip from March to April, April to May, etc. because there's more homes for people to choose from. January, February is always higher because there's not a lot of homes on the market because most people don't want to list at that time. They're thinking of all the snow, etc., and they want to move like end of June, July, a little bit into August to get the kids sorted before school starts. They don't want to move in January or February or even March because they're still thinking about snow and then they're like moving mid-school year, etc. So this is normal every year, but they like to make it seem like it's a crazy thing and, and the world is ending kind of thing, okay? Um, it is actually pretty common that it happens every year, but also in 2017, uh, it was very similar to this, that we had all the crazy bidding wars at the beginning of the year. And then there was a slight dip just as more inventory came on and also some government officials put in some extra rules, i.e. Kathleen Wynne, and then it adjusted out. Then by fall, it was back to normal again. Okay. Okay. Um, so although the market now is different than January and February, um, we are still having offers, multiple offers on properties. To be honest, more the higher priced homes, they're just listing closer to what the sellers want. So if they want a million, they're listing at a million. They're not listing at $7.99, hoping to get a million. But there are still some that are holding offers, but they're more in the lower prices, like $4.99, $5.49, $5.99, $6.99 at the highest. But basically, once you get over that, then people tend to be listing at what they want. So you might see like little stamps in the side of, um, you know, a new listing and it says offers anytime or in the verbiage, it says offers anytime. And what this means is that they just want closer to their asking price. They don't want 100,000 over 200,000 over, etc. They might even negotiate. They might even take some conditions like finance or inspection. Uh, I haven't heard of anybody accepting the sale of another property, which means the sale of a buyer's property that they have to sell at first. However, I have heard through other agents that they've, you know, kind of uh, heard wind or whatever of it, but I haven't um, or we haven't on our team. But definitely some um, offers are coming in now with conditions, but there are still lots coming in firm. OK, so it's kind of weird, like some homes are sitting a bit longer 20 days, 30 days, etc. But then, for example, in Guelph the other day, there was a home and they joked, they said it looked like a crime scene took place there and it had 32 offers and it sold 117,000 over asking and it was listed for 649. So it's not like it was 299, it was 649 and it was really disgusting, to be honest. So anyways, that is what's happening. It's a bit more all over the place now, whereas in January, February, it was definitely all um, crazy bidding wars, etc. And now some are crazy bidding wars, some are sitting, some are taking under asking. There's a wide variety. Um, so at the landlord and tenant board before, it used to just be kind of like angry landlords, but now there are also angry tenants. So some tenants are angry that, for example, um, their landlord's not fixing things that they're supposed to or that their landlord has locked them out uh, illegally. And back in the day, it used to take 45 days on average to get into court. And sometimes you get in as quick as 25 days, but 
25 to 45 was the normal. Now, on average, it's over 140 days, but I've heard of a lot of people saying seven to nine months. I personally haven't tried to go to court since COVID started, but it's definitely taking a lot longer. So what they are saying, because so I had the actual number, so there's over 70,000 um, applications on average, and in uh, 2021, they only got 48,000, so way less than normal. And the year before COVID, for example, they had 84,000 applications. So there was way less applications last year, but yet um, not like it, there's a massive delay. And the reason is not because there's less staff. They actually have more staff. But the reason is, is one, they've gotten rid of a lot of um, full-time members and they have a lot of part-time members. And they said that they're not really up to date with the landlord and tenant board, which to me makes no sense. Why would you get rid of these people and get other people that don't know it as well? But they did say their budget went down. So it was like 29 million down to 23 million. So they said, hey, let's hire these other people that don't know as much about it um, to deal with it. But the main thing they're saying is not actually money related. They're saying the main thing is them switching it to online. So doing all of their Zoom and so forth. They're having technical issues. They're having this, that, the other. So they actually said they had 28% less um, not verdicts, but hearings, 28% less hearings than the year before um, just because of they can't get their stuff together online. Okay. Um, and yeah, so that's that. Um, what else was I going to say? So the average price in Toronto is now just over 1.2 million. And hi, Eric. How are you? Hi, Josh. Hi, Sam. Hi, Chris. Can't see the other one. I think it's Mandy. Thank you guys for popping in. So in Toronto, the average sales price is over 1.2. It was over 1.3 in March. So some people are like, the market's crashed 100,000, I lost 100,000. But again, this happens every year. As there's more inventory, it's just natural, right? It's more of a, you know, people say like, oh, the spring market's the best market, which basically everybody says, but you have more competition always. You always have more competition April, May, June, because more people list their homes because they want to move in the summer. So January and February, you're more in the driver's seat as a seller. Is it more frustrating to buy a house during that time? Absolutely, because there's not uh, as many or there aren't as many things to choose from. However, a lot of people will sell in that time, January, February, and they'll put a long closing date, and then they'll buy when there's more to choose from like now, okay? So yes, it's gone down from 1.3 to 1.2 in Toronto. That's an average, 1.3, whatever, 218 or something. But last year was only a million, so it's still gone up tons, so don't think that the market is crazy, crashed, or anything like that, um, which a lot of people like to think. Uh, so. Like I said before, some sellers are now taking conditions. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, bow, bow, bow. Hmm. Oh yeah, so there was a lot of markets um, that have doubled and more than doubled in the past two years. So the highest jumping market in all of Ontario is North Bay. So shad flies, if anybody's ever been there before, I lived there once and there's lots of shad flies. They're these stinky bug things. So if you just moved up there, you will experience the shad flies. Um, so they've jumped over 100%, 111.1% in the past two years, which is crazy. So let's just say a home used to be 400,000, now it's over 800,000. Just in two years, it's jumped up that much, or 500 to over a million, which is crazy. The next highest jump was Woodstock, which is also Woodstock-Ingersoll, which is kind of between London and Windsor. They've gone up 105.4% in the past two years. Bancroft has gone up 103.5%. Uh, Brantford has gone up 100.4%. And even the places that have the low growth um, of Ontario, so the low growth, the lowest growth place in the past two years in Ontario is Mississauga, which up, went up over 60%. So Mississauga went up 61.5%. So that's in two years, so over 30% a year, and that's our lowest growth. So it's still insanity, craziness in growth. Um, Ottawa was also pretty low at 63.2% growth, which again is still really high, but that's the lowest. And Windsor went up also a low amount considering the rest, 65.2%. 3% as well. Barrie had the ninth highest growth. So the top eight places in the past two years. And then Barrie again was number nine. So North Bay was number one. Woodstock was number two. Bancroft was number three. Um, Brantford was number four. Kawartha Lakes was number five. 
London was number six, North Cumberland seven, um, and Quint, Quint, I don't know how you say that, Q-U-I-N-T, which I don't even know where that is, uh, was right before Barrie, and then Barrie was next highest, okay? So Toronto was actually the fourth lowest growth. Hi, Mel, how are you? Um, too bad I will not see you in Bermuda, Melanie. Um, Toronto had the fourth lowest growth in all of Ontario, so they went up 67% their average sales price in the past two years, which is still really good, but when you think of North Bay going up over 111, that's why it is lower on the charts. Um, and actually there was a couple economists that uh, wrote an article and they were joking that Ontario is going to be the next Manhattan just because it's going up such crazy high amounts. Um, but like I said earlier, with all of the people that are leaving Ontario, maybe we won't have the demand anymore that we had before. Sorry to make you cry, Mom. Um, the next question comes from... Who do we have? Patricia and Steve from Stainer. So Patricia and Steve from Stainer said, uh, our granddaughter currently lives with us but would like to buy. How much money approximately would she need to do so? Um, thank you for asking Patricia and Steve. So to be honest, it depends where she's buying. If she wants to buy in Stainer or if she wants to buy further up north and also it depends on her um, debt to service ratio, her credit score and her job. So let's just say, for example, you know, her debt to service ratio. So what that means is how much she makes versus how much she spends. Does she make $100 and she spends 90? Does she make $100 and spend 25, et cetera? So that's your debt to service ratio, how much you spend versus how much you make. And then uh, her credit score. So I don't know if her credit is 400. I don't know if her credit is 750. I don't know if her credit's 829, et cetera. So they're going to look at that as well as her job. So they're going to look, does she jump around at jobs a lot? You know, she works here for two months. She works there for a year. Then she works here for six months, et cetera. Is she self-employed? Does she have a set income, et cetera? They're going to look at all of those things. So if they like all of those things, then she can most likely get 5% down. So obviously just going off a $500,000 house, then she needs 25000 She also needs her land transfer tax and lawyer's fees. So um, land transfer tax, if you go on realtor.ca, there is a little calculator button. And so the first one comes up as mortgage calculator, and then it says land transfer tax. So you can click on that, pick Ontario. And they'll show, let's just say it's 5000 or 4000 or what have you. And her lawyer is going to cost her about 1200 to 1800 depending on disbursements, which basically means how many times they email or call her, etc. Um, so hopefully that helps a little bit. If you have any other further questions, feel free to ask. Um, what was the next thing I was going to say? Oh, yeah. 40 uh, minutes outside of L.A., there's a uh, suburb called Santa Ana. And there was... Um, this gentleman, he was outside of a store at like a big grocery store and he was selling food and he was elderly. He was selling it out of a wheelchair and this 28 year old girl went or lady, woman, whatever, went up to him and asked him his story and he said basically he didn't have a cell phone. He couldn't afford most days to eat and so forth and that the food was actually made by somebody else, this lady, and she gave him a cut every day of how much he sold. So she ended up taking two pictures of him. She posted it online and um, started to go fund me. And within a week, he had over $84,000. So she bought him a new wheelchair. He retired and he said that he felt 40. And by the way, he was 93. So he said he had tried to get a regular job a bunch of times, but nobody would hire him because of his age and basically laughed him off. So um, I just thought that was cute. So anyways, um, next question comes from Chris in Barry. So Chris in Barry. What did Chris say? Um, do you think any of the governing bodies will actually build the 1.5 million homes that they are um, projecting? Um, I don't. <laughs> However, they may. But for example, they said that already. They said, oh, we're going to build 1.5 million homes in uh, the next 10 years. And then like two weeks later, they said, we're going to build 100,000 homes in five years. And I was like, okay, but if you do 100,000 in five years, that's 200,000, assuming you do the same the next five years, that's 200,000. And just two weeks ago, you said 1.5. So I don't necessarily believe them. And to be honest, even if they did, there's supposed to be over 400,000 people, you know, immigrating to Canada, which I always just assume half are children and half are adults, but that could be wrong. It might be 75% are adults. I don't really know. But even if we go off of half, that's still 2 million people. So if they build 1.5 million homes, uh, but there's 2 million people new and we already don't have enough inventory, then that doesn't make sense. So I don't necessarily think they're going to build it, but 
Anyways, thank you for asking my opinion. Um, what is next? Um, so there was um, a man at the uh, San Francisco airport, and basically he came across this other man that uh, was trying to get a ticket and basically getting frustrated to get to Las Vegas. And the man couldn't speak very good English, and he went over to the man because he could also speak Spanish, which was what the man, obviously, um, his first language was. So he found out he had been laid off, he had family in Las Vegas, and somebody had told him that he would get back to Las Vegas for $150, and he didn't have a phone, he couldn't write in English, and um, didn't basically know how to use the internet. He was an older gentleman. So anyways... This fellow bought him a ticket. It was $330 to get him back. And when he went home, he told his wife about it. And his wife said, aren't tickets normally, uh, you know, 200 or 240 And he said, yeah, but I got him first class. So I just thought it was cute because not only did he buy his ticket, but he got him first class. So I just like when people are kind to one another. So that was that. Um, next question is from Crystal and Josh and Barry. So Crystal and Josh and Barry said, um, we are in the middle of a lease, but have the opportunity to buy my aunt's home. Are we bound to the lease? Um, thank you, Crystal and Josh, for asking. Uh, officially, you're bound to the lease, yes. However, a lot of landlords won't take you to court for it, knowing one, court's going to take forever. Two, then even if they get the judgment towards you, then they have to take you to small claims court, or depending on how much you owe them or how much you might owe them by breaking the lease, but most will just not do it. However, maybe they're okay with you leaving, maybe they want to up the rent anyways, maybe they want to sell it anyways, and you know, cash in on the crazy market. So you, it's up to you if you just want to break it and kind of run away and hiding, or if you want to talk to them reasonably and hope that they let you out of it. But um, legally, yes, you are bound to it, because assuming that you signed an agreement with them, um, but I'm, and most people will let you out of it, or again, or just won't take you to court for it. But thank you for asking. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, yeah, this is a short one. So there's all sorts of dogs, of course. There is this one that you can't really see, who's just laying down, cozy on the couch, which I said I wasn't going to let him on the couch, but uh, he snuck in onto the couch eventually after a few weeks of living here. Um, so there is a Jack Russell. He is two in Ukraine and they um, have actually taught him to sniff out bombs. And I have no idea how he's doing this, but the other day he found 262 in one day. He's just like going to places and digging and finding bombs and they're deactivating them or whatever they're doing, um, which is crazy, but I just thought it was cute because dogs rock in many forms. So I like that, um, that this little Jack Russell's finding all these bombs and saving all these people. So anyways, that is all for me. Have a beautiful long weekend. Stay kind and thank you for popping in.